Good morning, Wadijine and Dajine. My name is John Barry. I'm the chairman of the Ogapa tribe in Oklahoma. We were the historical tribe of Arkansas, where Southern Sioux and tribe were brothers and sisters to the Osage, Poncas, and Kaws, and we speak a Siouxian language. We were, uh, back in the day, we lived along the Mississippi River on the, predominantly on the western slope of the, or the western side of the river, and the Chickasaws were on the other side, and we used to fight all the time, and we still laugh about that with uh, the Chickasaws, but we have a great relationship today. In 1541, Hernando de Soto landed in Mississippi County, Arkansas, and he walked five miles in his um, diary. He wrote that he walked through cultivated fields while visiting the Quapaw people. Today, we, uh, we relive that agricultural history in what we do and how we live in our little res in Northeast Oklahoma. We have about 4,800 tribal members. We have a large casino resort that helps fund a lot of the things that we do today, downstream casino resort. Our driveways in Missouri, our parking lots in Kansas, our casinos in Oklahoma. You're more than welcome to come anytime you'd like. We also have a Tar Creek Superfund site, which for many years was number one on the national priority list. Today it's number two. We're in the EPA's top 10 of best run um, Superfund sites. We're the only tribe in the United States that has a MOU and not a contract to do all the remedial activity on our site. We do about $20 million a year of remediation at Tar Creek, and it's becoming sort of the basis of a lot of our agricultural activity. As we remediate sites, we, uh, we plant corn and soybeans, and we study those. They're not uptaking the heavy metals, and we're able to put that into our feed program for our animals. So what, what do we do in agriculture? We feed people and we do good things. That's what, kind of our motto. We have a large, about 1,200 mama cow, um, a registered black Angus herd. We have a large bison herd. We're members of the, the bison cooperative, the tribal uh, um, bison cooperative where we have a purebred herd. We also cull out the non-purebreds. We work with Texas A&M University to, to do genetic testing on our bison. And as we get them, if they have any bovine in them, they go into our feed program and end up on a plate. And the other ones, we're trying to preserve the species along with other tribes. Um, we uh, have a real good relationship with a lady named Temple Grandin. She's designed all of our working facilities. She's a professor at Colorado State University in Fort Collins. She's an autistic lady, but she is considered one of the premier um, scientists in managing um, livestock in the most humane way possible. So we don't use any electrical shocks. We don't pressure our animals. We treat them with a lot of love and, and um, we, we praise them and we worship them and we really take good care of them from the day they're born to the day that we process them. So we're very proud of our efforts to really treat our animals very good. We're also the only tribe in the United States that has a USDA inspected beef and bison processing plant. It's really taking off. We always welcome any tribe to come visit us and learn about what we do. We share our grant information, we share our plans. Anything that we do that you want to learn about, we're more than happy to share that. We have several thousand acres of row crops. Um, we, we, do, we have greenhouses that we do uh, heirloom um, vegetables. So we do a lot of old antiquity type vegetables that we use in our restaurants. We uh, also supply a lot of beef and nutrition to the local community. We're very much community oriented. A lot of our products go to Title VI, we provide all of our Title VI with their protein at no cost so they could use the, the rest of their budget to work around the plate, and that's very helpful. We feed a lot of people, they're not all Quapaws, they're just people in our, our area. We give about between 500 and 700,000 cans of food to nine regional food banks every year. We've given over 30 tons of beef to nine food banks. So we're very much into giving and building our community through agriculture, and helping people eat. So that's very important today. I've been working on the farm bill. We're very much in agriculture. And really, we want tribes to be the front line of feeding people in their region. And we're very supportive of that. And, and that's part of our mission is as we do good things and feed people. We also have a canine program. We have Belgian Malinois that are trained by veterans from Afghanistan that were in the 75th Ranger Regiment. And our dogs can smell out 
um, bacteria like Salmonella, E. coli, Listeria, and other types of uh, nasties. They also, we have dogs that sniff out bombs and guns, and we also have attack dogs that'll fly through a window and eat you if you're mean to our policemen. And uh, we, uh, we got a couple that could jump eight feet and bite a guy on an eight foot wall. So we, uh, we're very much into uh, public safety using our dog program. Like I said, we have greenhouses. We have a very large bee program, a honeybee program. We, we don't use any kind of chemicals in, on our pastures. We use our bees to help uh, with pollination of the forage for our animals. And uh, we also use the honey in our restaurants and we sell it in, on the open market. We have a coffee roasting facility. Y'all might have tried some of our coffee. We're very proud of our coffee. It's, you know, we import the beans, but we do the roasting and we try to put sort of a native flavor to it and it's really taken off. We also do uh, crops, we, have, we craft beer. So the Quapaws historically were very much part of our, our life was agriculture, just like all tribes, feeding each other, hunters, gatherers. And today that tradition grows. We're very honored by the, um, the Harvard. I never thought I'd be on stage with people from Harvard. Um, I'm a graduate of the University of Arkansas, but we're very proud of that. We even help other tribes, the Kiowas. We save kidneys for them from our bison. They pick them up. I've got a brother on the, in Pahuska that we give him our hides for our bison, and he makes probably the best drums in America. They're big grandpa drums. So we like to use any part of the animal that will help other tribes culturally. We share those, and we're just very proud of where we're heading. We think every tribe needs to get involved in agriculture. We have land, we have resources, we have history, those things that you need to, that's embedded in our blood to help our brothers and sisters eat, eat, eat to feed and uh, to thrive. So again, if you ever get a chance to come to Quapa or contact me, please come out and see what we do. We'd love to share what we do. We're very proud of what we do. And I also wanted to give a shout out to Janie Hip and to Colby Duren. If it wasn't for them, we couldn't have gotten off the ground and stood up our program. So congratulations to the others that are being honored today, and I appreciate y'all coming out. Have a good day.